Hi there Cameo owners, today in your 2009 carriage Cameo, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Furion's Vision S wireless camera system with side marker and rear cameras. So you can select each camera individually. If we touch the screen, you can see you've got left, right, and rear. Those are the ones we installed. There's an additional slot for another camera if you wanted to add one in the future. They have it labeled as the door. If you select on one of these, it will pull it up full screen. And that's all three of our cameras there in full screen. If we hit the screen a second time, it pulls up our second menu where you can adjust the volume because the rear camera does have a microphone, which is nice for backing up. You can hear a, a spotter behind you or something because uh, even though you got these cameras here, you can see a lot. Sometimes a spotter is just necessary for certain situations. We can also select view all here to see all three cameras at the same side. When in this mode, if we turn on a turn signal, I've got our test box here, hit left turn on the box, it automatically selected our left camera I'm going to turn off the blinker signal. It takes it a little bit of a delay, and then it goes back to our cameras. I've now switched the test box to the right turn, turned it on, and then you can see it switches to the passenger side, the right camera. And I'll turn that back off. After a brief delay here, it goes back to our cameras. So you can see our trigger wires working as well. You can select right on the screen there to bring up any camera that you want full screen when you're in this mode. So we have view all. You know, if you select the left side, we get the left in full full screen. If we select the middle bottom, that's our rear camera, we get that in full screen. It is a color display, and again, this one does have sound on it. So now that we've covered some of that, you do have some additional options here in the menu um, for setup, picture, for like the picture quality. Um, you can change the brightness, and you can mirror the image if you want. Uh, so you got a few options here. There's also motion detection options. So you've got some options in there to adjust the, the screen to change it to the optimal uh, viewing that you would like. So let's head over to one of the cameras here on the side of the trailer and I'll show you the pair button that's located on bottom. When you go to pair the camera, you're going to go to the pairing mode there and you would select the camera that you want to pair. Now again, all, all of ours are paired. Once you select it, it'll tell you to hit the pair button on the camera. So we're just going to go back. The pair button is located here on the bottom. It's a little tiny button, and you do have to press very hard. If you don't hear the click, you didn't press it hard enough. And it's black, so it is a little hard to see, but it's got kind of a rubber coating on it, so it will feel different than your other, uh, than the rest of the camera around it. You can see the small blue light, that just indicates that it's powered up, but there's another small, what looks to be a light that doesn't illuminate. And what that actually is, that is the sensor for the night vision. It's just kind of an ambient light sensor to determine, hey, is, is there enough light outside that people will be able to see fine through our camera lens? Or is it dark enough outside that, hey, I'm gonna need night vision mode in order to function? Um, so I'll just cover this up here on the bottom and by covering it up, that turns it into the night vision mode. And we can actually see the LEDs here, the infrared ones have lit up right here on the side. So that means it's in that mode. And you'll also know that it's in the night vision mode if your display is in black and white. Uh, you only get color in regular daytime mode. You get black and white for night vision mode. So I'm gonna try and simulate this here by covering up the light so you can see that on the camera. So we're on that driver's side camera there. You can see here's my hands in the display. I'm gonna take my hand and put it underneath that sensor. And there we go, after a brief moment, it switched it over to night vision mode. I could actually hear the click here at the camera and see the infrared lights light up. So I know that it's working here and you guys should be able to see that the display has switched over to black and white for night vision mode. This is present on all three cameras and the pair button is also in a similar location on all three cameras. Even though your rear camera looks a little different, it's red, the camera's facing a little different direction, the pair button is gonna be located under there. One of the differences though on our rear camera is it is gonna be adjustable so you can tilt it. So let's go take a look at that rear camera real quick. You can see we got it up high, angled down below, and you just simply just twist that camera to get the desired angle that you want. We do currently have it in the furthest tilt down position possible. So we're gonna start our installation here by kind of just figuring out how we're gonna install this. This is actually a really easy kit to install on many trailers because it's designed to replace your existing marker lights. Uh, unfortunately on this trailer here, um, we don't have any marker lights, so it's gonna be a little bit more complicated on this trailer. We're gonna to have to run all of the wiring and stuff. Normally the wires are already run for you. Like you had a marker light there, but uh, well, let's get into this. Now, while the wires are usually run too, if you do have marker lights, one of the wires that's usually not present 
is a trigger wire, which is an optional wire. You don't have to actually have hook up the trigger wire for it to work. But if you want the camera system to prioritize this camera when you turn on like a blinker signal, so like for the right turn for the passenger side here, when we hit the blinker, we can hook it up to this wire and that would make it go full screen on this one. That's, that's an option you got. Um, but if uh, otherwise, normally your wires would be there. So we're gonna start actually at the front of the trailer now um, and running our wires. We've already kind of take a peek underneath because uh, where the camera's supposed to go, it's supposed to typically go in a, roughly a location around here. Again, your, your marker light's usually in a uh, location about around here. So we're gonna be putting it below this door here. Um, that's just where we're gonna put it because he doesn't have a marker light. So it's a good idea too to just double check, make sure you got nothing on the other side, that you're actually gonna be able to mount it here without any, uh, any obstructions in the way. So that is a good first step. At just to check to see that you're going to be able to mount them here and then after that now we got to get wires routed to be able to hook this up so let's go ahead and uh, take care of that because that can be one of the most difficult parts so we're right at the very front the camera is looking down the opening for our pin box here and this is our seven-way wiring right here so we're going to tap right into the seven-way and run our wires this piece right here this metal sheet there was a screw here here there we just took a couple of screws out down this paneling which allowed us to pull this down to give us a gap we then took a metal coat hanger and we straightened it out and we poked it from here all the way across this panel until it comes into the compartment here at the front of our our trailer here the storage compartment from there we can go down and get around our wires as necessary but we need to get them from the source here back there so we can use our coat hanger here to run our wires we've got some wire here this is just your standard trailer wiring we got brown yellow and green which uh, on a four pole, brown's gonna be your tail, yellow's gonna be your left turn, and green's gonna be your right turn on a four pole. We'll have to test these wires because your seven pole colors can vary and be different than what a four pole wiring is. So we'll test before we hook them up. Uh, but that's, we're gonna act like it's regular four pole um, as far as the outputs of these. So I'm gonna tape this to the other end of the coat hanger that's poking through here on the inside of my compartment. I've just got some electrical tape here. We're just gonna tape it up, and then we'll use our coat hanger here to pull this back through uh, so that way we've got. Uh, enough wire and everything to be able to cook up there and then run, route to our cameras. You can get wire like this here at eTrailer if you do need some. Uh, you have to figure out kind of how much length you're going to need. You know, we need to go across this whole thing and then it needs to split to go off to our cameras. So I would say you're looking at probably 12 to 15 feet to keep yourself safe. So we're going to get up in here and then we're just going to tape this to our coat hanger. It's going to be really hard to see because uh, the coat hanger is just barely long enough. It's poking out maybe about two or three inches inside of our compartment there. So just enough for us to be able to attach this to. And now we're just going to feed it back on through. And then we're just working it kind of back and forth, being careful and gentle not to pull too hard so it doesn't come off until we get it all the way to where it's fed through. And then we've got plenty of wire there. We'll just cut it off at the end. I usually just use a razor knife and just kind of run it down it. I can peel all this off of here. And we've got our wires here for us. We need to separate out the ends here. So when I cut the uh, electrical tape off, we separated out the green. We're also gonna cut in between here to separate the brown and the yellow. I'm gonna use my uh, wire cutters to do that, not the razor knife to make it a little safer and easier. All right, guys. So the next thing we were gonna show you was testing the wiring on the trailer. You probably remember the last shot you saw there was a bunch of wires hanging down here. When I went to go test the wiring, the guy had shorts inside of his seven-way cable. Uh, so we were getting intermittent signals sometimes, and other times we were getting nothing and it was shutting down. So I went ahead and replaced the seven-way cable and added a junction box to it because uh, there was a lot of corrosion because he didn't have a junction box. So all the moisture just got down inside of the wiring here and just had corroded it from the inside. So now that we've got uh, the seven-way fixed again, we can get back on uh, installing our camera system. So next you're gonna to wanna to test your wires. Hopefully you've got a junction box. Most, most of these trailers do have a junction box. They're not quite as pretty as the e-trailer one here. Uh, you don't usually get individual posts, but you get a box that's got all your wires in it. And you probably have uh, just like a wire nuts or something like that inside of there that's crimping all your wires together. You can poke your end, the needle end of your test light into those wire nut or crimped uh, connectors to test your wiring. We're gonna be just poking right here on one of these studs. You can get ground from your frame. Our, our ground wire's right up here. 
And we've gone ahead and plugged it into our test box. Uh, if you're doing this at home, if you don't have a test box, you can plug it into your truck. So we need to determine our tail light circuit so we know where to hook that up. So we've got that turned on and we're gonna check our wiring. Tail lights on seven way are usually, I believe the green wire, so let's touch that there. Yep. Yeah, so usually it's green, but you'll wanna test this yourself to make sure, because on a four way uh, system, brown is the tail light wire. So you can't necessarily go by color code. That's why we wanna test this. So we see green is tail light. We're then gonna check our left turn, which on seven way is usually the red one. So I'm gonna turn that on now. Yep, and we can see it blink in there. That is our red one. On your four pole, it's usually the yellow. So again, can't go by color. Keep that in mind. It's red on ours here. We checked it. And then the right turn, we're gonna check that next. And on seven way, it's usually the brown wire. So let's see here. Turn on our test light. Sure enough, there it is. It's our brown wire. On four pole wiring, it's the green for the passenger turn. So again, can't go by that color. So now that we know we've got our right turn here, our left turn there, and our tail there, we know where we need to hook up the wires for our camera. So we've gone ahead and turned off the test box. We don't wanna cause any shorts. We've got this wire running back in there. You know, we don't know what the other end of the leads are doing. So we don't want any power on any of these circuits we're about to hook up. So here's our wires here. We've got green, yellow, and brown. And I'm gonna hook these up like a four pole, just cause uh, that's what this is, is four pole wiring that we're using here. Cause we don't have a red here or anything. We're gonna put it in our junction box. A lot of times in your junction boxes, you can just poke it in the opening or there are holes that you can knock out on those, on a lot of the junction boxes. Uh, cause they're usually like a, a metal box that looks more similar to what you'd find inside of like a house. So we're gonna poke this wire in the side of that there to get it in our junction box. And we're gonna add ring terminals to this to connect to our studs. Now, if it did have a regular junction box where it didn't have studs like the e-trailer one, instead I would just use heat shrink butt connectors and cut the wires and connect them together with a butt connector. We're gonna be using some butt connectors later in this install at our cameras. So if you're unfamiliar with how to hook up a butt connector, uh, we'll be showing that off here um, in a little while. So there we go, we got our wires poked in there. I'm gonna strip back each one, and then on each one of these, I'm gonna place a ring terminal. Again, if you were doing this at home and yours don't have studs, you would simply just uh, cut one of the circuits and then attach your wire to it. So you would strip yours back. For example, the brown wire here, we're gonna use the brown as our tail light source for our cameras, but that's actually the green wire here. So what you could do instead is on your seven way here or on the trailer side, either way, just cut that green wire and where you had cut it, you're gonna use a butt connector to just reattach the two ends that you cut back together, but you're gonna slide this wire into one of those sides so that way it gets connected as well. I mean, crimp on our ring terminals, which is very similar to crimping a butt connector. The butt connector just has a crimp on each side. Whereas our ring terminal is just a single crimp. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get all of them crimped before I start making my connections. All right, there we go. Now we're just gonna hook them up. I'm just gonna work my way left to right. We know that the red was our left turn. So I'm gonna remove the nut off the post for our red wires. Take the wire that we're gonna be using for our driver's side turn signal, which we're gonna be using yellow. Slide this onto the stud and then reinstall the nut. And we're just gonna be repeating this with the two remaining wires. We're gonna move down the line. So the next one on our junction box here is green. That's our tail light in this instance. And we're gonna hook our brown wire that we routed to it to get that tail light circuitry back. I'm just gonna remove the next one and we're just gonna repeat that. 
All right, so now that we've got all the connections made here for our three circuits, and just to reiterate what they were, we hooked up our green wire over here, and our green wire we're using as the right turn signal. So green is right turn, we hooked up our yellow wire, yellow is gonna be our left turn, and our brown wire is our tail light circuit uh, going out. So that's what these are gonna represent when we go to hook them up at the camera. So now we'll head over to the side of the trailer and we'll start getting our cameras mounted up. So we're on the side of our trailer here. This is where we're gonna be mounting our camera down here. One of the things you'll wanna do is just check the back side, make sure there's no obstructions here. You're gonna be able to mount it here. And what I did is I checked it here and I also checked it on the other side. I found that on the other side, there was obstructions from this point forward. We don't have those obstructions on this side, but we do on that side. So we want our cameras to be symmetrical, mounted in the same location on each side. So since we know on the other side, we've got obstructions here, We'll need to measure at least that far back before we can mount our camera up on that side. So we checked on this side, make sure it's clear on this side, and that's how we determine that we're gonna be putting our camera from this point here. So it's gonna be kind of the front edge and top edge of where our camera needs to go. And that way it'll match on each side. We need to do a little bit of prep on our camera here to get inside. If we look on top, we've got a little slit there that is for our screwdriver to fit in. You can stick a flat bladed screwdriver in there and then just kind of give your screwdriver a little bit of a twist and then you can pop the cover off here. This is gonna reveal the mounting holes for our camera inside and our light. You can see two of those holes are there. Now, these lights were designed to replace the factory lights, uh, marker lights that you had on here. So you don't get any hardware. You are gonna have to provide your own hardware to mount these. Typically, you would just reuse the hardware from your light that you had removed that you're you know, replacing with using this camera here. Uh, but since we're adding these completely, having to run our own wires and stuff, you gotta also use your own hardware. We're also gonna remove these two screws here. This will separate the camera from the light portion of the assembly. It'll also reveal two additional mounting holes that we need to be aware of because these mounting holes, you have to use a very small button head screw. So even if you were replacing the lights on your trailer, um, it's not uncommon that you would have to get two different bolts for the ones that mount here just because the clearance you need for the head of that bolt is so minimal. So there you go, you can see here, this is where our pieces slide together and it's kind of slightly recessed there for the head of your bolt, but you don't get much. So you're not gonna be able to use any kind of hex head or anything there. It's gonna have to be a button head in order for the clearance uh, for this to slide back together when you got it mounted. I'm gonna show you the screws we're gonna be using here so you can get an idea about how small they are and how small they need to be for this to slide together. So these are the self-tapping screws we're gonna be using, and we're using self-tapping because this is sheet metal down here we gotta get through. And if we look at how small that button head is, we drop it down in here, we can see that it's barely sticking up above the uh, flat portion here at the top. We've got enough threads going through to grab into the sheet metal, and while that head of that screw is sitting in there, if I go to slide my assembly back together, you can see there it slides together uh, with ease. And if I push on the screw here, there's almost no play. It doesn't push up. So it just barely clears that little tiny screw. Just keep that in mind. You gotta provide, you may have to provide those if your screws don't fit, if you're replacing a light. Of course, if you're adding this without a light being there, you gotta add your own. So we're gonna set the camera down. We know we are light here. After checking for obstructions, we need to mount up here. And we've got it set to where the top edge is for up here and the front edge is there. Now I'm just kind of roughing it up here because we got to figure where our wiring hole is. Our hole for the wiring right here sticking out the back so we're just tilting it down so we can use a drill bit here to drill out a hole for that. And I'm just starting with the 5 16 We're going to go bigger. Um, we'll just step it up from here. All right, now that we've got it drilled through there, we are gonna step it up. We're gonna go to a half inch. That'll give us plenty of room to be able to safely feed our wires through without it like getting caught on this metal and messing itself up. And we also have to pass it through. Uh, there's quite a bit, this is pretty thick. 
it's about two inches thick that we got to get this through here. There's some wood behind it and then another piece of metal behind it on the other side. So now we can go ahead and mount the camera up. We've got our hole drilled out here. Um, we can pass our wires through and then mount it up. I'm gonna show you the wiring first though, because it's got all the labels on it here. And I found that these labels, since we gotta pass it through like a two inch portion, it's several pieces with wood and stuff in there that kind of moves around. The wires wanna bend and fall in between the pieces. Uh, I'm gonna remove the labels. If you're doing this at home, you know, you might wanna consider that if you're having a difficult time getting your wires to pass through these stickers on here, really make it uh, more difficult to pass it through a hole. So let's identify the wires before we do so. You can even take a picture of this with your phone so that way you remember. The yellow wire is our trigger signal. So we'll get that off of there. Get that out of the way. So we can get these passed through. The brown wire is our actual light. So the light here is our positive for the light. So it's our positive for the lights, the brown. Our positive for our camera is the red. And I've actually twisted these two wires together here because we're gonna be hooking that to the same source. We can go ahead and rip those off of there. We don't need those. And then lastly, our black wire is our ground wire. You can see it's labeled there as well. So there's all of our wires and their labels. Get those out of the way and you can twist these together and it makes it a whole lot easier to get it to pass through to the other side. Still a little difficult, just because of the massive distance that we have to travel, a couple of inches and a lot of fibers and stuff there. There we go. So I got it pulled through on the other side here. That'll keep that solid. We'll then line up our camera with our marks so we're at the appropriate distance and height that we need to be. And we're gonna go ahead and get one screw in. So I'm grabbing one here. Just kind of giving it a quick check for level. We can level it after, uh, a little bit after we put in that first screw, but it's not a bad idea to just kind of get it close before we uh, put one in. So that looks pretty close there. And then it'll pivot on this screw a little bit to kind of finalize the leveling. Line it up here. All right. Now you've got the one in there. I didn't run it quite all the way down. I lift it just a little bit loose right there at the end. And that'll allow me to kind of pivot this a little bit on here. Uh, to make sure that I've got it angled going down our trailer. And that looks pr pretty good there in line. So then we'll knock in our other screw. We can finish tightening this top one down. And put in the two over here as well. So now that we've got that mounted up, we can slide our camera back together and reinstall our screws. So our camera here should just slide right back into the unit. And we'll reinstall our screws. And these screws are really tiny. Um, so when I take these out, what I usually do is I, I set them inside of the lens here. Kind of use the lens that we remove as a little tray for all the screws and stuff. That way you don't lose them because these are a little in black too, but they're really easy to see inside that yellow lens. All right, now that we've got all those installed, we simply just pop our cover back on. And everything's looking good here for this camera. We're gonna repeat this on the other side to get the other camera mounted up. All right, so we're now inside that compartment where we routed the wires from. So we hooked them up to that junction box, they routed into this compartment here, and then from here we're gonna go off to our cameras. So we took the green wire, we separated it out, and we ran it off towards the passenger side. And we took the brown wire here and separated it, and we actually cut the brown wire. When we cut the brown wire, 
we used the butt connector to just reconnect the, the brown wire back together, but we also added another section of brown wire to that. So that way we can have some of this brown wire go towards the driver's side and some to go towards the passenger side because our tail light wire needs to light up on both sides. So we just wire it right here. You can see uh, how it's going off with the yellow wire over there. And then this way it's going over here with the green wire. And this is coming from the junction box here. So our green and one of those brown goes off this way and then it runs down the side here. And then there's an opening here at the bottom of our jack. So we just push it right off the jack to get it to go outside. For the other side, the yellow and brown wire, they just run down the top and then they also run down the side here and poke out an opening at the jack over there on the other side of the trailer. When routing our wire, we did use some wire loom clamps here and self-tapping screws to secure those to keep it out of the way so that way he can easily access this compartment without any wires in the way. We put a couple of those on the outside too, down the frame going towards the camera, uh, just to keep it all secure there as well. So we're gonna head down underneath now so we can see where the wires come out and we'll hook it up to our camera. So here's our wires here, we're now underneath. I used another one of those clamps and a self tapper to just attach it to the frame there. And then here's our camera wires poking out right here so you can see we don't have too far to go. Since we got this mesh right up here, we're gonna use that mesh to secure our wire to just help keep it up off the ground. Keep it up here. So I'm just wrapping a zip tie around one of those, trying to stay in between the tanks so we don't interfere with, you know, putting those in and out, potentially damaging our zip tie. And we're just gonna run it up. We're not gonna run it up real tight because we don't want it to be rubbing up against this grate here. Uh, grate looks pretty rusted and stuff. So we're gonna just kind of let it hang like that. That way it will support our wire, but not force it into any sharp objects that could wear through the sheathing. So there we got that there. We're gonna go ahead and trim our wires here. That'll be enough to reach our camera. We can strip back each end of these wires and we're going to use some of that wire that we just tossed out of here uh, since we've got it down here because um, we still got to hook up a ground and ground can be anywhere on our frame there's actually a nice little ground attachment point right here that we could even go into all right so now that we got those stripped back let's find the appropriate wires we need to hook them to here so we already ripped the labels off but we know what they are based on color so I'm just untwisting them because I kind of twisted them together here just to make them pass through the hole easier. There we go. We got those all separated. Okay. So our brown wire that we routed is our tail light circuit. We're going to hook that to the light circuit on our light and also the power source for our camera. So I'm bringing the red wire and the brown wire here from our camera assembly separating those two out they are pre-stripped so when you just just pull the ends off of it there they just they haven't cut but they're just sitting on there so they just pull right off i'm twisting these two together so that way we, they're going to make the same connection and they strip back way more than uh than you're going to need on there so we're going to trim some of this excess off here trim it down to about here because ideally our butt connector here will not have any wire left exposed after we attach it. Now, since we're working outside the vehicle here, and we're underneath, you know, we know as we're going down the road, moisture and stuff's definitely going to splash up in here. Uh, it sits outside all the time, so condensation and stuff's also going to get in here. So we're going to use heat shrink butt connectors to prevent corrosion from taking hold of our camera wiring. So we're just gonna slide that over our wire. We'll crimp that down. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the yellow wire next before we make the connection. So the yellow wire is gonna be all by itself. You can see this is the pre-strip we kind of talked about. It's, you just pull the end off of there. We're just going to twist this one, trim off the excess, and place a butt connector on it as well. I find it a little bit easier to work with by putting the butt connector on the shorter wire side first. 
just makes it a little bit easier to control uh, when you're trying to make your connections. Let's trim that back. We'll grab our other butt connector. We'll get it attached. And once we get our yellow wire attached here, we're gonna do the same thing with the black wire. We're just gonna get that prepped, you know, twist it, trim it back. It'll look just like the other two we've got here. And then we can start finalizing those connections. All I'm doing is I'm sliding the wire in, making sure that the uh, sheathing of the wire doesn't slide into the butt connector crimping portion. Only the exposed wires in the crimping portion to ensure we get a good connection. But you can see some of the sheathed portion stays in this shrink area that seals it up. Now, if you do need wire strippers or crimpers for performing any of this install, you can get some here at eTrailer from Performance Tools. I'm using the Performance Tools crimping set right here, showing this off. All right, so we've got all of those attached. Now we just gotta hook them up to the other side here. So we're gonna start with that double wire, the brown and the red. That's our power source for the tail lights, and that's also gonna power up our camera while our tail lights is on. So bring that one over, we'll get our crimper on it. Slide our brown wire in the butt connector. Crimp it down. Looks good there. So now we're gonna connect our green wire that we routed and the green wire we routed, we connected to the passenger side turn signal circuit. So that way when we turn on that blinker, it'll send a signal over to this yellow wire. This is the trigger wire. This is an optional circuit that you don't have to connect, but if you do have it connected, what will happen is when you do turn on your blinker, it will prioritize this camera and put it in full screen for you. That way when you're going to make like a, a, a merge or something onto the highway or change in lanes, it'll automatically pull that up full screen on that side so that way you can see, hey, do I got any obstructions I need to be concerned about over here? Got that one connected. And then lastly here, our last wires are ground. So we're just gonna use some, some of the excess wire that we had cut off. And we're actually just gonna be routing it right over here to this ground attachment point. So that'll make things easy. Another option you've got for ground is uh, if you don't have something like that right here, the um, little wire clamps that you installed here running your, keeping your wire secure you could take one of those screws back out and use like a ring terminal on the end and put it under that screw and get ground right from that screw going into the frame. So I'm just gonna trim, uh, I'm gonna strip back some of this wire and we're gonna connect it to the black wire and this will be our ground wire. All right, and I'm just gonna be running it right over here. We'll trim off our excess. Strip back the other end. And then we're gonna try to use this ground connection point if we can. Uh, we're gonna just use our flat bladed screwdriver to loosen this screw. We'll add our wire and then tighten it back down and that should give us our ground. All right, so now that we've got them all connected here. We went ahead and just slid our wire through there after loosening that and then tighten it back down. I did kind of uh, twist the wire around a little solid core one here just to make sure it was nice and sturdy. And then now we're gonna shrink down our butt connectors. And we're just gonna hit all these with our heat gun until they're shrunk down. And then we're gonna perform the same procedures on the other side to hook up the other camera. Now the only difference between this side and the other side is on the other side, we didn't route a green wire, we routed a yellow wire. And that yellow wire we routed was the driver's side turn signal or the left turn signal. That's gonna hook to the same spot on, our, on your camera over there as the green wire did on this side. So you'll hook your yellow wire to the yellow over on the other side. So I'm gonna finish up shrinking these down and then I'm gonna head over to the other side and get those connections made over there as well. So now we're here at the back of our motor home, our trailer, I'm sorry, and our third 
camera for the backup camera in our kit installs by replacing the center light here at the top of your trailer. So we're gonna remove this light assembly and replace it. We're just gonna put our screwdriver in here and we're just gonna twist in to pop the cover off. Very similar. There's not a notch on these, so you can kind of just find any spot that there's a little gap around it and you can put it in there. So we got that off. Next, we are going to remove the screws that hold it in place. There's one on each side. And you'll want to save these screws. Now, I'm probably not going to end up using these. We'll see uh, if we end up having a clearance issue. These are more like a it's a self tapper, but it's got the tapered end kind of like you'd see on a wood screw. So we'll see if that's gonna be appropriate when we pop the cover off our light, but we may end up having to swap those out with a button head style to prevent from damaging our new assembly. So now that you've got this on here, across the top of all these lights, they, they run a silicone bead. We're gonna be running one as well. Uh, but you just gotta pop it off of there. It actually came off of there quite easy on this one. And we're just gonna pull our wiring out of here if we can, try to get as much as we can out of there so that way we got plenty to work with. And we can see this is just quick spliced right into our wiring here. We already know that from uh, the testing that we had did before and up at our junction box, that green was our tail light circuit um, on the seven way connector in the junction box. So we can see green right here. We know this is our tail light, so that's our hot wire. It is going to matter when hooking up your new light. This one here doesn't matter because it's a typical incandescent bulb, which it has no polarity requirements. You can hook it up any way you want and this light would light up as long as it's got power and ground. Our new light's an LED light. It does have polarity requirements. So positive must go to positive and negative must go to negative or else she won't light. So now that we see that, we can go ahead and probably reuse these quick splices. So uh, I just opened it up. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing with the other one. Again, you just pop pop the cover off here, just a little lock cover. And then you can see the seam there. Pop it open like a peanut shell. And then just pull your wire out of there. And then we can just push this back together here. Looks like this one. Metal piece there needs to pop back through. We can, we'll deal with that when we go to put our wires in here, making sure we get that in there properly. Main thing is get these out of there. You got those open. It's still attached to the wires we need it to. I'm gonna hop down now and grab our new assembly. Um, I'm also gonna clean this up. I'll probably do that real fast before I hop down. Got a putty knife up here. This works pretty well for getting the silicone off of there. A lot of times if you can kind of start it, you can peel it off from there too. Yeah, I was gonna get this off of here so that way when we put our new silicone on, we can make sure that it seals up against the motorhome. So here we have our new camera. This is uh, the rear one, it's got the red light. Camera off to the side, it's gonna go right here just like this. Coming out the back, we have the same wires as we did up front for the other two cameras. We're not gonna be hooking up the yellow wire on this one. Uh, the yellow wire was your trigger wire. And again, the, we had the turn signals to make those activate. For this one, if you did want this to trigger, you could hook it to your reverse light. Uh, but on these trailers and motorhomes, getting wires from your reverse light all the way up here is a very difficult task. Uh, sometimes it could require much disassembly of your motorhome to be able to run that wire. So you could be looking at a full day's worth of work to run one wire. So um, that's up to you if you want to do that or not. If you, uh, most people like to actually look at their monitors when driving down the road. So they don't usually hook up the trigger wire. That way this just stays on the rear camera the whole time so they can uh, monitor their flat toe or any gear that they're pulling behind them. So just keep that in mind. So we're not gonna hook up the yellow wire. We are gonna be hooking up the other two wires uh, for the camera and the, the light. We'll be hooking those up as well as our ground. So the yellow one here, I'm actually just gonna, we're just gonna trim this off just right there. And we'll leave that there. If they wanted to add it in the future, they'd have the option to be able to do so. 
All right, looking at the gauge of this wire here, I think we're gonna change our plan of attack just a little bit. The wires here are so thin that I'm pretty sure the quick splices that are located there aren't gonna get a good grip through the sheathing to actually grab the wire and get a good uh, contact with it. So we're gonna fully remove these. We'll cut and use butt connectors to make our attachment here. Um, just, a, just an assessment after looking at the wire. Um, if you do use the quick splices here, there's a good chance that this camera's gonna end up working. And as you drive down the road, the vibrations are gonna cause it to come into contact and lose contact and give you kind of an intermittent operation. So after looking at that, we're gonna, we're gonna remove these and then we'll trim our wires here. Before we mount it, because we're not gonna be able to access the other side, we're gonna cut the wires here right where the quick splices were. So that way we're kind of getting rid of the exposed area of the wire. Now, I do want to kind of reiterate that you want to pull out some slack here because if this wire falls back down in that hole, you're going to have a difficult time retrieving it. So make sure you do got some slack pulled out to ensure that it's not going to fall back in there on you. And then strip back the ends of each of these wires. Now that we've got these stripped, We'll start making our connections. I'm gonna start with the green wire, which we know is our tail light positive. So we're gonna ring those down. So now we're gonna take our butt connector here. I'm using the larger size now, since we're gonna to have to put quite a bit of, these are a little bit thicker and we gotta kind of double them up in here. We're gonna put our butt connector on one side of our green wire there. We can then grab our camera, take the red and the brown wire from your camera, twist these two together. And just like the ones up front, we've got a lot of excess on here. Trim that off. And then this will slide in the other side of our butt connector and we'll crimp it down. So we got that guy prepared there. Get our butt connector and our crimpers. We're gonna, we're gonna set that up there actually for just a second because we're gonna have to connect our camera to the other side as well as our the other side of this green wire here. So we're gonna bring this up and twist this into our camera wire as well. So now we got the green wire, the other side of the green wire, our red wire from our camera and light and the brown wire from our camera and light. All three of those are together. Grab your butt connector. Slide your wires up into the connector and then crimp it down. <clears throat> a lot of wires in there, so you gotta squeeze a little bit harder to ensure that you get them all crimped. Nice, solid connection there. So now we're gonna hook up the white wire next, grab another butt connector. We're gonna put this on one end of the white wire that we had stripped back here. All right, and then the other side of that butt connector is going to connect back to the white wire that we had separated it from, as well as the black wire coming off of our camera. Got quite a bit of excess there on that black, so we'll trim that down. We'll twist that with our white wire here. Slide on our butt connector there. Sometimes with these, when you're trying to twist them and work like this, I actually find it easier to start the butt connector in the, in the pliers just because you gotta spread kind of far apart to get it to line up in here. All right, and then we can just set that on the roof. So that way it's prepared for us. So we can just grab that. 
peel off that sticker there. Sometimes those things just really get in the way. Use our heat gun here and we'll shrink these down. And it's not uncommon when you're heating these up that those stickers that were on there with the labels, they end up shriveling up on you. So that's why peeling them off of there doesn't, doesn't really matter that much because they'll probably end up gonna shrivel it up when you go to put, shrink down your circuits here. All right, so we can now get this camera mounted up. We're just gonna push our wires back in the hole there. And like our other camera now, we'll need to get access to the mounting holes on the inside. It's got a slit on top, just like the other ones. Our flat bladed screwdriver will go in there and it'll pop that out of there. Then, we're gonna switch over to our smaller Phillips screwdriver here to remove the two screws here, just like on the other ones. And I'm tilting it up like this. I'm sorry if you guys can't see, but these are such small screws. And if you tip it up, there's a lip around the inside of the light here. See that lip? And that'll, that just helps you from dropping it. You know, if you, you drop it, it's gonna be inside that little lip there. So I'm starting it here, looking at it. And then I twist it up so I can't drop it. Because they're so tiny. You're up here on a ladder, you drop it, it hits the ground. By the time it bounces, it's into the void. So don't lose it. All right, we got that other screw out of there. Our camera. We'll separate. We're just setting that up on the roof for now. So now we're gonna mount up the light here. First, you always wanna just double check your camera so we can see that it slides on on the right side, on the passenger side, because we want our antenna facing up. We want the Furion logo with the F uh, facing where you can read it. So it's important to know the correct orientation. So it's gonna go like this. And then we're just going to try to center it here and attempt to cover up the holes that are present from the old light as well as the markings from the old light, kind of the outlining there if we can. So this looks pretty decent about right there. Covering that up. We're gonna take our self tappers and we're, we're actually using our own hardware here. We're not reusing the hardware that was in our light just because of the type of screw it was. Really wasn't appropriate for this light. Most of the time these lights do have the appropriate screws behind them when you get there, but not every trailer is built the same. So just kind of making sure that we're at a similar height as well, trying to get it all lined up. The new light here is gonna be larger, a little bit taller and the old ones that we removed, so it's got to keep that in mind. It's going to be a little bit bigger. This looks like that'll work pretty well right there. What the hell? All right, we were able to make a mark where we want it, so that's good enough for the moment here. It's difficult to get the pressure you need standing here on a ladder. So there's the little hole from where we made our mark. We didn't get it all the way drawn in yet. We're just gonna stick the screwdriver in the hole, then get our gun on there. And then we can brace ourselves on the other ladder here to get more pressure. And then get that to run in. We can then zip it back out. We'll line it up with our camera. and then we can get that to run down. Now, before we run on our next screw, you can get kind of a pivot out of it here so we can kind of level it out. And me personally up here on the ladder, I have a difficult time uh, seeing if it's level. And I also don't recommend using a level because one, because these are kind of rounded on top and your trailer is probably not completely level from side to side. It's just probably not gonna be. So it's best, uh, I like what I like to do is I'll eyeball it up here. And then if you got an assistant uh, down below that can maybe give you a bit more of a, a wide view, 
maybe ask them real quick before you run that second screw in, second opinion that it's nice and level. All right, so after I asked a fellow coworker down below just to help, help me eyeball this up, uh, they said it looked pretty level, so I ran in the remaining screws. And we'll now take our camera. We can slide this back into position here, making sure that goes all the way on there. And then we're going to reinstall those tiny black screws that we had removed. Being careful not to drop these. All right, and then we can insert our lens. Just click that back into place. And the last thing we need to do here now, I've got some clear silicone in a tube. You can get some here at each trailer if you need it. If you haven't already threaded on your antenna too, you can thread that on there. Um, I already had it threaded on there. I'm actually gonna remove it here real fast just cause it's kind of in the way. I don't wanna break it when I'm putting the uh, silicone across the top. And we're gonna run a bead all the way across the top here. And then just a little bit down the side. And that'll just prevent moisture from being able to run down behind our new assembly here. But we don't want to put it on the bottom um, just because condensation and stuff still could potentially build moisture up behind the lens here a little bit. And by not filling it in here, it can dry itself out. All right, so now that we've got all of our cameras installed and everything, we need to test it out to make sure it's going to work. So we're just using our test box here to do that. Our test box here has our cigarette lighter or auxiliary plug style outlet on it so we can plug our monitor into there this is what you would do inside your truck when you're pulling your trailer or in your rv whichever you're using the sun just plug that into your cigarette lighter that powers up our monitor now it should already be paired with your cameras and if we click on it here we go to view all we can see all three cameras that we installed are visible and we can also verify they're on the correct side Sometimes when you get this, they may not be paired or they may be paired incorrectly to the wrong position. You can pair your cameras by pressing the button on the side of the unit and that'll bring up the menu where you can choose pairing. And that completes our installation of Furion's Vision S wireless camera system with side marker and rear cameras on our 2009 Carriage Cameo.